Hello, everyone. It's Champion DJK coming at you again with another Matchbox video. And we've got, uh, we got a Lamley-inspired video for you today. Um, well, you know, John has been showing off some Matchbox as of late and kind of getting uh, into his Matchbox collection, getting stuff. He did a Whatnot show recently, all that stuff, giving away some of the stuff and kind of like going back in time. Uh, to Matchbox, and uh, it's kind of prompted me to kind of go through my collection, and I wanted to organize it, because it's just kind of all over the place, I don't have it organized at all, and I mean, aside from the fact that my Hot Wheels are, or, you know, Hot Wheels and Matchbox are segregated and all that stuff, but I don't have any organization to the types of Matchbox and all of that, uh, so I decided I was going to go ahead and organize that, and that's going to be quite the feat, because I have a lot of it. But before I do that, I needed to open up some older Matchbox, not really, some of it's not very old, uh, some of it's pretty old, but I needed to open up these cars so I could work them in, uh, kind of get an idea of what I've got, uh, you know, maybe set some collector goals like I like to, uh, now and then to try to pick up more cars of various types, and I just, it's been a long time since I put all this stuff together. There's a few Matchbox uh, castings that I collect. You know, so I want to make sure, uh, find out, figure out like what I'm missing of those, all that kind of stuff. So lots of cool stuff to come. I don't know how I'm going to do that, the content for that. I may just kind of sort them on my own. I don't know. I'd like to actually do a live uh, video where I just kind of go through and I'm sorting my cars. I thought that would be kind of fun. But anyway, I have to get these opened up so that I can integrate them into the collection. Uh, and why not start with this guy right here? The Lamley's Leaks Tire Service Ford F-150 SVT Raptor. Uh, this uh, came out, I don't know, I want to say, so copyright day is 2016, so that would make sense, you know, around 2016, 2017. I think that's about right. For some reason, I thought it was even a little bit older than that, like uh, 2014 or something like that. But Because that's kind of when I started collecting. I remember this coming you know, shortly after, at least I thought shortly after I started uh, really getting into uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox and all of that. So anyway, we're going to open this one up. We'll start with this Lamley's Le Lamley Leaks uh, vehicle. So this is pretty funny because I don't know that uh, John even knew that, that they were going to put that on a Matchbox. I think they just did it and uh, surprised him. I, I can't speak to that for sure, but I think that's what it was. But uh, what? how cool is that to be immortalized <clears throat> on a Matchbox vehicle? So check that out. Uh, you know, it's a main line. It's a main line. And, uh, but a pretty cool piece nonetheless. The way I sort out my Matchbox really is I've got like all the main lines together. They kind of go in baggies, which is a no-no kind of because the baggies start to deteriorate. And then they go into like these bins with baggies. It's just the most efficient way to store mainline cars, you know, that don't have a, a ton of value. But then I've got, you know, mid-tier and premium stuff I keep in jammers. And uh, this will actually go in a jammer, even though it's mainline, just because it's kind of a special one. So that's pretty neat right there. So that's what we'll start with there. A nice little F-150. And then more stuff from that era. So these are like kind of the orange card, diamond plate, whatever, uh, matchbox. Before they revamped the car to kind of more of a current style, this is what we had. And there wasn't really a lot there was a lot of fantasy castings uh, in these releases. The distribution was very, very poor. Uh, most of the time I would find new Matchbox. It would be like at Dollar Generals and stuff that they seemed to actually get it, uh, you know, prior to like a Walmart or stuff like that. There just wasn't very much distribution for Matchbox in this card type. Uh, so we got a Tesla Model S. And by the way, the copyright date on the back of this card is 2014. So, you know, we're looking at like 2015-ish probably is when this when this came out. And I know you could, uh, there's probably a date code. Uh, they put the date code on the Thailand Met? Yeah, they do. H29. And I don't know what year H is, but one of these days I should memorize that so I'd know. <clears throat> but there you go. Check it out. It's a Tesla Model S. Uh, nice detail. So they had some really nice cars in this era. 
that just the distribution was terrible, and they put a lot of fantasy castings in the cases. Nowadays, Matchbox is much more, like, uh, collector-oriented than they were, I think, during this era. They, they were putting out more, I don't know, fantasy toolings, castings, whatever, construction equipment, stuff like that. Not as many cool cars, it seemed. And now the, the ratio of, like, cool cars to, like, fantasy castings uh, is more in the cool car favor. So, Tesla Model S... Uh, then we got a BMW M1 in red, looking pretty decent. So I've had these these particular carded cars. I must have had these for a long time, probably since you know 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. So we're just finally opening them. But yeah, some nice cars. I mean, good detail up front, the graphical representation of headlights and the grill and all that stuff. The BMW logo, that's pretty good. And it's still good to this day. They do a good job on that. Nice little red BMW. So, pretty nifty. Uh, you can look at the bottom. It's an M. Or wait, no. H. It's an H19 on the bottom. This is the production date code. <clears throat> All right. Infinity G37 Coupe. And this one's got a 2016 copyright date on the card. You can see the card's actually a little bit different. So the Lamley Leaks one has the same card as, as this one, where it says metal uh, pieces than this one. You know, it's a very similar card, but just a little bit different. Guaranteed for life. <clears throat> but here's your Infinity. And again, we like to look at the detail right away. So these are all nice little clean cars. Look at the back. Looks pretty good. So that is pretty pretty sweet there. <clears throat> Definitely digging that. Infinity. There's not many infinity, you know, in 164 scale. There just isn't. So kind of a cool car to see. Uh, get some 164 scale or 164 scale-ish love. Actually, this one says it is 164. It actually got the... Uh, scale on the bottom. Some of the old castings did have scale. We should probably be looking at copyright dates too. <clears throat> That's always fun to do. When you look at copyright dates, it kind of gives you an idea of when the casting was actually produced. So this was 2013. It gives you an idea of how old the casting is. So you got the date code on the bottom that tells you when it was manufactured. The copyright date is when the car was probably developed and when the casting was developed, <clears throat> which kind of gives you an idea of how old uh, the tooling is just the tooling, not all, not when the car was released. I don't know. I can't see it on the bottom here, so we'll give up on that one. But but there you go. We got two more from this kind of era. Here is uh, a '57 GMC Stepside. I don't know where I got this one from, but it's got a uh, actual price tag on it. It's kind of interesting. Cannon construction. Nice little green uh, step side truck. Copyright date 2009 on the casting. 166 scale. Cornuit. And G20 is the date code. The uh, 2013 is the copyright date. On the actual package. So pretty nifty. And it's crazy to think that 2013 is already you know, 11 years ago, coming up 12 years. That's just, ugh. Time's a-flying. All right, so then we got the checker cab. I'm a neat one. And this is the last one that we've got from this sort of era of Matchbox. And then we're going to move on. So this one, copyright date. So this was like, oh, it looks like 2003 and then 2015. So it likely or maybe, maybe went through a retool. <clears throat> Checker cab, Matchbox 162 scale, and G46 for the date code. There you go. Kind of neat, right? All right, so that's, that's these models. 
and we'll consider these all part of the same kind of release era anyway, not necessarily tooling era. Uh, next, I think I'm trying to go, we're going back in time, and I'm trying to be sort of chronological about it. I'm guessing this card would be next. Uh, no, maybe not. This was 1998 is the copyright date on that card, so we'll hang on on that one for a second. We'll go to this card right here. So this is kind of neat. They got the uh, like that cheesy font there on the side. Matchbox card. Uh, the copyright date on the back of this card is actually 2006. And we're going to say it came out in 2006 because it says get your 2006 Matchbox poster. So there were some cool cars in this era. I've got a bunch of them. This is a main line from that. From that. And... Um, yeah, so the first one we got is a Lincoln Navigator. We'll go ahead and open that one up and check it out. <clears throat> Pretty nice little basic uh, truck, SUV, whatever. Nice detail up front. And again, just a nice little clean version of the Lincoln Navigator. Here's a quick look at the base. It says it's in 168 scale. Copyright date 2003 on the actual tooling. And I'm having trouble finding a production date code, but they maybe they didn't start that yet. Were these, and that's the other thing. <clears throat> when did Match, when did Mattel pick up Matchbox? Um, yeah, so this was still Mattel. I don't even know. I'm not a Matchbox historian, but. Uh, Mattel had them during this time, so I think they picked them up in the 90s, right, or something like that. So, yeah, so this would be your, you know, your 2000s Matchbox. This is a really nice one, actually. This is a nice little Lincoln Navigator. The wheels leave a little bit to be desired, but they kind of fit the, the vehicle, so not terrible. So we'll put that one right there, and then this is on another... Uh, same card type, DHL for this one. Doesn't even give it a uh, name for the truck, it's just DHL. Uh, funny thing is, is I used to work uh, at a call center right out of college, and uh, the first client that I had with the call center was DHL, and uh, it was, uh, we were in the um, international package, like lost package department kind of thing. And uh, I had to take escalation complaints. So it was people that were absolutely furious that their stuff was either missing or late, and most often missing. And honestly, it was a fun job. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I, mean, I was getting yelled at, you know, day in, day out. But I don't know. Sometimes it's fun if you can handle that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this has got a little nostalgia for me. That's actually why I picked it up, because it had DHL on it. And this uh, little cab over truck, it's an unlicensed model. Uh, the back opens, plastic box, metal cab, metal base. And 1999 is the copyright date on the actual casting itself. It's got those kind of off-road tires. Same thing as the Lincoln. So, kind of an interesting little one. Uh, oop, I just popped a door off by twisting this thing a little bit, and I twisted it because the cab was on crooked. Well, well, well. What have I done? Um, how do I fix that now? Oh, it helps if uh, I probably put it on the right way. There we go. There, we're fixed. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's see. We got another one from that era. This is the 1956 Ford pickup. And no, that was a Chevy. That was a GMC. Um, so this one again, copyright date on the back is 2005. So same sort of car type. 1956 Ford pickup. This one's got plastic base, metal body. Decent detail up front. Decent detail in the back. It's a nice little step side pickup. These wheels are kind of interesting. These chrome, like little um, dog dish wheels or whatever they call them. <clears throat> kind of similar 
to these, but different. They don't use these wheels anymore. Uh, so 56 Ford, copyright date on the tooling is 1996 and 165th scale. And uh, kind of neat there. A uh, nice color, nice basic, clean, clean model. And you just get your headlights and your taillights and nothing on the side. Not needed because it just looks good as it stands. This is kind of a cool little model. I'm digging that. Um, moving on, we go to, and this is only going to get better. We go, we got the Premier Collection. It'll be last. That'll be the last stuff we go through. <clears throat> so we'll go back in time and then forward in time, kind of. This is another one that's on that same type of cart. Lexus GS430. Get your action poster on the back of this one. Copyright date 2007. So we'll say probably 2007 is when this came out. No 2006 pick, uh, poster. Uh, this one actually has a 55th anniversary matchbox on there. Yeah, 1952 to 2007 is what it looks like. So that confirms that right there. And we have a Lexus in green. Pretty cool looking Lexus in green, actually. A little GS430. And I'm liking it. I think it's pretty neat, even with that graphic on top. Normally, I don't really like the graphic on top because it kind of deters a little bit from the, you know, how clean uh, the version of the car is. This one says it's 164 scale, copyright date 2006 in the casting. So this would have been a new tooling uh, for that year of Matchbox is what it looks like. And it's in green. It's almost like green machine green. <clears throat> and kind of a cool... Matchbox. Look at the detail in the front. I mean, that's just great for a little $1 model. Uh, so I am definitely digging this one. I think that's uh, very, very nice. All right. Uh, we got one more in that card type, and that would be this guy right here. This is the Morgan Aero Max, the, like, wooden car, right? I think these were made of wood. Uh, ready for action, sports cars. This one says, collect all 100 vehicles, get a Matchbox poster. Well, if you collect all 100, they'd give you a poster. Uh, this is copyright date 2008 on the car. Ready action. So this was a pretty cool era of Matchbox, actually. A lot of the cars that came in these cards looked pretty good. And a lot of them were just basic like this, where they had just your headlights, you know, your front detail, your rear detail, they weren't doing anything crazy, and uh, just doing some pretty nice, clean-looking versions of cars, including this Morgan, which is pretty nifty. I don't know how many Morgans you can get in 164 scale. Not many. Uh, this 2008 is the copyright date on the casting. So we're going to say this was probably a new, like a brand new tooling for that year would be my guess, and uh, that's probably accurate, and it's quite nice, uh, so I'm liking it, and yeah, pretty, pretty nifty, of course, metal body, plastic base on all these, plastic wheels so far on all these as well, all right, uh, let's see, this would be, I believe, the next type of card, and I think I only have one on this particular type of card. This is an LTD taxi, uh, air traffic taxi. It's an eight dot, although this is a weird eight dot because it's like almost got, that's a little different, isn't it? The normal eight dot wheel. Maybe not. All right, it just seems like there's the gaps, whatever. All right, so this says 1999 checklist. So yeah, I mean, that pretty much tells us 1999. And this one's got suspension. I thought it would. And copyright date on the bottom. Do we get that? 169th scale. Copyright date 1987 is what it looks like. So it's an older tooling. Uh, definitely an older tooling. And, but this is the 1999 version of it. And we got taxi up there. And all in all, 
looking pretty good. So that is pretty neat. All right, so what's next? What is next? Uh, I don't think this card, what's the date? 87. Uh, yeah, I think these here. All right, so I've got two. This one apparently, this one had like a thing to not be stolen on it. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so this is a 1995 date code. This is a Ford Mondeo, sold at Kmart for 94 cents, super fast matchbox. So this is your 90s card. These wheels, these little orange slice wheels are, are kind of goofy. Uh, but it is what it is. It's a thing of the times. It is a Mondeo, and it's in kind of a cool little uh, livery here. Kind of some decent deco. So this era, like the 95, 97, you know, that 90s era uh, was probably pretty decent for Matchbox, but not, the, in my opinion, not, you know, some of it, some of it was cool, but Hot Wheels were just kind of terrible in that era. Not great years for uh, die cast collecting. In fact, a lot of times you see people selling collections and stuff of stuff they collected in the, that era of 90s uh, from Hot Wheels. You know, before the pre-Super Treasure Hunt modern era, whatever. Um, and it just, you know, you'd be lucky to get a quarter of a car, uh, if that. This one's got an issue with the back axle, which is why it doesn't want to turn. we got the suspension up here. The back one is uh, sacked. I don't know what happened with that. But there you go. It is a Ford Mondeo. What a sassy car. ICS driving technology. What does that technology do? Lock up your back wheel so you can't drive. Anyway, there's that. Parking brake stuck on. But it is uh, kind of a neat little model. Right-hand drive. Uh, copyright date on the bottom here is 1994 for the casting itself, the Ford Mondeo Ghia. And 159 scale, according to this, with some of the ugliest Matchbox wheels ever. These wheels. So there's that, uh, and then I got one more, and this is just like, this is what you'd see, right? This type of color, new color, new color, fluorescent pink. Uh, 1993 is the copyright date on this. It is the Firebird Racer in neon, pink, green, and yellow. <laughs> so let's open up that. Uh, the Firebird Racer is kind of a cooler casting. It was, uh, it's, it's an 80s casting, from what I right, recall. Uh, copyright date, uh, 1985 on the actual tooling. It says 164 scale. It's actually probably not far off from being actual 164 scale. It looks to be a little big, but that's because it's like a wide body, like, racing version, I guess, of it. But, uh, lengthwise, I bet you it's, I bet you it's pretty much right on. So, Pontiac Firebird Racer. It's got those little orange slice wheels. This one's got the suspension. And rolls very smoothly. No issues with the axles on this particular one. And we've got every fluorescent color or neon color. Even blue is in there. Uh, new color. <laughs> new colors. Uh, so, yeah, this thing is just a sign of, of the time, right? Uh, all right. Moving on, I think the next ones we got, before we get into the Premier Collection, we've got the, uh, I don't know what you want to call this. This is like an 80s card, I believe. So this is, yeah, copyright date 1987. So late 80s, probably into early 90s, I'm guessing. The tire cards with the, uh, the number of the car in the tire, in the rim of the tire. Uh, ben Franklin is where this was sold at Ben Franklin's, and it's the uh, you know this is just this is very 80s like this 3D grid looking thing, so definitely makes sense for the time it was in. We got another eight dot. This is the Buick LeSabre Michelle livery, and this is pretty cool. So suspension, check, rolling, check. Uh, copyright date on the casting, 1987. 165th scale, according to the base. 
and kind of a cool little stock car. So kind of neat shell livery. Uh, the graphics look pretty nice on it. Champion spark plugs, Goodyear, Marshall something. Bill Stein, Bell helmets, Pennzoil. Lots of little sponsorship logos on there. Uh, so 1987 copyright date. We'll say maybe it came out in 87, maybe 88, maybe not, maybe multiple years. Because I think some of these matchboxes, you know, they came out through multiple years, like in the same livery. Now, I don't know that for sure. In the same graphic, I should say. But this is another cool one for the little eight dot collection, which is a timeless wheel, I have to agree. Uh, I do, it's one of my favorite older matchbox wheels, actually maybe my favorite. I mean, although it's competing with this, you know, so for the era. So yeah, that was a horrible wheel. This is a really nice looking, nice looking wheel. All right. Uh, then I got three more that are kind of that era-ish. This is a slightly different card. I'm going to switch it up for a second. This is the same card. This is a Ford Bronco 2 in a new color. Uh, authentically detailed and rugged construction. This is, uh, yeah, Bronco. Beach Patrol, Ford Bronco 2. And copyright date on the back of this card is... Where are you? 1990. Beach Patrol, Coast Guard, Rescue. Kind of goofy. Big old wheels. Uh, copyright date, uh, well, we got 157 scale, looking for a, uh, 1987 is the copyright date on the actual tooling, and 1990 was the card, so, yeah, not much to say about this one, it's not really my bag, really, but I, I must have picked it up a long time ago, and I don't even remember where or how, uh, but we did. This is another one, this is on a cut card, and I don't know why the card was cut. But it looks like you could have made some sort of diorama with the card. It's got like something to actually cut out and fold. Kind of interesting. Uh, so this is a, uh, what is this, a Chevy Blazer, yeah. All right, so go ahead and open this up. Kind of a neat casting. It comes with this plastic antenna. That's kind of cool. Sheriff. SP7, 1983, made in Macau. Is this one made in Macau? No, I think these were made in Thailand. Yep. So made in Macau, so a little bit older. 80s. And kind of a neat little one. This one does not, I thought it might have suspension. It does not. Uh, plastic base, metal body. You got your antennae up there and uh, kind of neat. We're going to set these over there. All right. Moving on, riding high. This is the 4x4 Chevy van number 44, similar car type. Much cooler looking though, I think. Um, we got some color in the back here, color printing, get behind the wheel, new matchbox, copyright date 1983 with a proof of purchase, one of 75. Uh, so that is neat. And the official steering wheel collector case you could have got for Matchbox, which is kind of neat. So this is pretty cool. This is a van. Uh, it's green with a riding high, horse, riding on a horse kind of thing. Get behind the wheel. So kind of a cooler looking card. Very, very early 80s kind of look to it. And uh, very, very neat. So digging this one here. Very, very cool. What do you think about that one? So this will join my little van collection. I don't really like go after all the van. There, there's a lot of these four by four Chevy vans or regular Chevy vans. This particular body casting, there's a ton of them, a ton of different variations. I don't really go after them, but sometimes when I see them and I see a cool one, I'll definitely pick it up. And I thought this one was kind of cool. So. Pretty nifty blue windows. The color green on this is pretty nice. And uh, it just looks pretty decent. We'll set that one aside. All right, so last up, we have the Premier Collection, which is a 
pretty cool line. The wheels, you know, they leave a little bit to be desired, let's be honest. They, they, some of them are pretty chunky, pretty big. The cards are long, and they're limited to 25,000 pieces, which I guess in the grand scheme of mass-produced die-cast, I don't know, it's somewhat limited. Uh, copyright date in the back of this one is 95, so we're looking at like mid-90s-ish, likely for all of these. This is World Class Series 1, and the first one we're going to look at is just a really cool one, right? The Plymouth Prowler. So let's go ahead and open it up. Now, these came in the Premier Collection. They're going to come with rubber tires. Uh, they come with a collector box right here. If you wanted to save that, you could. I don't, I don't save these. Um, however, when you look at Vintage Matchbox, having the box and not having the box for the car makes a giant uh, difference in value, it seems. So, if you have the box, they tend to sell for a crazy amount more than without the box. But do I think that these one of 25,000 pieces will ever become crazy valuable, like some of the older vintage stuff with the box? No, probably not. Uh, but, you know, weirder things have happened. But I'm not saving the box. All right. So, anyway, you got the Plymouth Prowler. Now, these are going to have somewhat of a full deco, or at least headlights, taillights kind of thing. Uh, they're going to have rubber tires with tread and metal body plastic bases pretty much on all of them. Now, the wheels are somewhat cool, but they're pretty, they're steamrollers, right? They're big, wide uh, tires. Copyright date 1995 on the casting on this one, 156 scale. And I guess not a bad version of the Plymouth Prowler. This thing was kind of crazy when it came out. They were trying to go for retro hot rod kind of look but in an actual, like, production-produced, you know, whatever, car. And, I mean, it's kind of cool. They're not very common to see around. I don't even know how many of these things they made or how well they even sold. I would say in person, they look a little bit cooler than this particular casting. This casting looks a little wide. It is a little proportionately weird. And at 156 scale, it's definitely larger than 164. But... Kind of a cool one, cool Premier Series, rubber tires, all that good stuff. So some of you people that have to have your rubber tires to think something's cool, you know, you might think something in this little collection's neat. This is a Select Class Series 2 Premier Collection Corvette Stingray 3, which was like a concept Corvette, right? Uh, this is 1995 is the copyright date on this one. Go ahead and rip this one open. Check it out. So again, I mean, it's, it's a, the, the design of the car is really a sign of the time, right? You know, they were really going for like curvy, kind of retro modern, but with curves and I don't know. The design language from that era is not necessarily my favorite in some cases, uh, but kind of neat. Regardless, 1994 copyright date on this one, Corvette Stingray 3, made in Thailand, 158 scale, so again, a little bigger than 164. Big steamroller, fat meat tires with tread, and interesting uh, kind of rims. They, the, the rims look pretty decent. I don't know what's up with this one. It looks a little uh, damaged, but, uh, but there that is, so... Weird car, little concept, and uh, I don't. This car never made it to production, as far as I'm aware. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I mean, look at faces in places, right? Look at the face on this thing. Yeah. All right. A little bit goofy. Those have suspension. Uh, the Prowler does not. This one. This one does. What's the copyright date? Yeah, '94 uh, for the uh, actual. Uh, casting itself. So, all right. Uh, what's next? Next is this one. This is pretty neat. This is a Jaguar XK120 in World Class Series 3 in the Premier Collection. Again, uh, limited to 25,000 pieces. And copyright date 95 on the packaging itself. And again, we get the box with it going to toss, and no suspension on this model, Oops. and this is actually pretty premium looking, aside from the huge giant gap where you can see through the wheel well, which is a little bit weird, um, but check that out, some detail up front, 
Uh, some detail in the back. Got nub 120. Don't know if that has any significance. Right hand drive and decently detailed kind of interior there. Trimmer on the window. White wall tires with some decent looking rims. Uh, this one actually has a metal base made in China. 157 scale. Copyright date on the tooling is 1984. So it's an older tooling. And kind of a cool one. I, I like this. I like these, uh, you know, these real old kind of looking cars, elegant looking uh, things. And, you know, decent version of it. I like the wheels, you know, even though it was probably designed for a larger wheel in diameter, which is why we got that unbelievable gap there. But depending on your vantage point here, if you're looking at it like like that, it's pretty obvious. If you're looking at it like that, it's not quite as bad. But it is there. And kind of a cool one. Kind of a cool little premier. And it's heavy. Very, very heavy with that metal base, uh, metal body. All right, we'll set you right there. And then we have two left, or three left. Uh, this is the Camaro Z28. This is in Select Class Series 5. So 96 is the copyright date on this particular card. And here's our tooling. This one's got this one's got suspension. It's got some very uh, era correct looking wheels. And what do we got in the bottom here? Made in Thailand, 163rd scale, copyright date 1993 on the casting. That's kind of cool, lowered like that. Again, details up front, faces and places. I mean, kind of, are they trying to take cues, right? Are they trying to get a coherent thing going on with the Corvette and the, and the newer Camaro design? We got some package rub on the top here. That may clean up with a little bit of polish. Probably won't do it, though. And again, big old fat tires on it. Not quite as fat as, uh, as these, but biggins nonetheless. And, uh, you know, not bad. Not great either. I mean, proportionately with the wheels and stuff, it does look a little weird. So we'll set it right there. And kind of that's the case for a lot of these uh, that are in this Premier Collection with these rubber tires. The tires are just too wide, right? And that kind of creates a problem. This is a Thunderbird Turbski coupe open that up we're running out of room to show you the packaging but the packaging is all the same this is in select class series five kind of a nice looking one with the black and blue and gray black and green blue and silver again comes with the box all that stuff that we're not going to hang on to and then uh a little bit of packing junior rub on the top of this one as well. This one's got uh, some detail in the interior. We got some actual like painted detail in there, which uh, actually, you know what? We do in the Camaro too, I just missed it. And you know what? We do there a little bit as well. Just a flat disc for the steering wheel on that particular one. Uh, you got dashboard detail on that one. Gotta pay attention to that, I guess. And then uh, this one is also a metal base. So, metal base, metal body, 167 scale, copyright date on the casting, 1987. Suspension. So, kind of a cool casting. Thunderbird. Rolls really nice on these rubber tires. And again, a different rim. So, we have already one, two, three, four, five. Well, actually, no. This is the same as the Prowler. So, four different wheels, essentially, so far in this Premier Collection, so that's quite a, quite a little bit of a variety. They all kind of look similar because there's no, like, black wash in the wheel, which, you know, and they're not open, so they kind of have just the stamp design of the, the wheel there, where if they would have opened them up, you would see, like, dark in the, in the negative spaces, or if they would have, you know, somehow black washed them so you could actually get black in there, so it kind of looks more 3D, uh, but it's not. This, uh has like an inserted detail too hot for you inserted detail for taillights which is neat 
uh, painted detail up front for the headlights, which I think actually maybe in some cases these would be plastic inserts. I think they just uh, are a plastic piece of some sort and they painted them on this, but they might be clear on some other versions of this casting. I think they actually are. So pretty detailed little model. And then lastly, we got Lamborghini Diablo. Uh, yeah, Lambo. And this is in the Select Class Series 5, copyright date 1996 on the package itself. And there's this one. Uh, Metal Flake Purple Paint, big fat tires on this, which kind of deter from it a little bit. Uh, plastic base, which is actually a sparkly plastic base. Copyright date 91 on the actual tooling, 159 scale, made in Thailand. And this one has an opening rear engine cover to reveal that beautiful engine inside of there with some detail that looks pretty decent. Some detail in the back, 30th anniversary. A uh, little bit of detail in the front, and what really just is problematic, I guess, on this one is the the wheels because they stick so far out. If you were to blow this scale eyes up, there would be some pretty big wheels. Now this one does have suspension. They got the same size back as the front wheels. The back ones fit a little bit better. The front ones they just don't, and they should be tucked in a little bit. And that makes it kind of gives it a little kind of goofy, almost off-road look. But, you know, kind of kind of the time, you know, sign of the time. And this is yet another different wheel. It's kind of similar to this wheel, but it is different. It's a more like rounded spoke kind of wheel, kind of an interesting uh, looking wheel. All right, so that's going to be it. We did a nice long video. We opened up a bunch of cars here today that I now get to add into my Matchbox collection, which I am maybe going to tackle sorting here sometime soon. I wish I could bring you along the ride for it, but I probably won't be able to. This is going to be a relaxing with a cup of coffee kind of thing and just kind of chilling, looking at all of what I got and and organizing it, which is a nice kind of experience uh, to do. And uh, always fun to kind of get your house in order with, you know, with your die cast sometimes. Get a little control of the chaos, which is sometimes difficult to do. All right. Thank you guys again for watching another episode, a long one. I appreciate it. And uh, you all enjoy your day. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.